One of the things that I look for when I go through my charts using stage analysis is long stage one bases. And the reason for that is that typically the longer a stage one base, the more potentially powerful the stage two advance once the stage two bull market kicks into high gear. And the reason for that is when a stage one base occurs, the ownership of stock is transferring from weak hands to strong hands. And what's happening is that sellers are not able to push the market any longer into a stage four downtrend. And they're basically in equilibrium with buyers. So instead of trending in either direction, the market simply trades sideways. And a lot of times what happens is volume starts to dry up and interest in the sector essentially goes away because all the traders that are looking for markets that are trending in one direction or the other, they simply kind of give up hope and, you know, long-term holders give up hope as well because they no longer view the market as ever being capable of, returning back into a bull market and those are the weak hands that are essentially leaving the sector so i've highlighted this concept in past videos and in particular we talked about the large stage one base in the gold stocks which led to the powerful stage two rally that we've observed in gold stocks this year as well as talking about individual stocks like tesla that based for a couple years before breaking out into a stage two advance and even other sectors like biotech back in 2011, 2012, when biotech broke out into a new bull market after basing for multiple years and, you know, produced some powerful advances in different biotech stocks. So really the key is that when I'm going through all these charts is, is just to observe these stage one bases and obviously not to take action until the stage two occurs, but you can put them on your watch list for potential big moves in the market. So basically the biggest stage two or stage one base that's out in the markets right now is in the currency markets. And shown here is the Euro currency ETF and the Euro has essentially been in a stage one base since early 2015. So Going on two years, um, if we were in uh, March 2017, would be a, the two-year anniversary, really, of the Stage 1 base that's been going on in, in this um, currency. And notice how the, um, the, the range of this Stage 1 base has really tightened up over the last four or five months. Um, with the price action getting really tight over the recent months and kind of forming like a, a symmetric triangle pattern. Notice how volume is also drying up in the CTF and, and the 30 week moving average is now trading sideways with the price action above and below the, the moving average. So classic stage one basing action in this um, currency and you know, because the, the U.S. dollar is essentially the, for the most part, the inverse of the euro because they're, they've are they got the biggest weightings against each other. The U.S. dollar completed that massive parabolic run back in March 2015. And actually, if you go back to my first video on YouTube, I talk about the potential top for this this market. And it's really, you know, ever since that, parabolic spike ended it traded sideways with um, a lot of retesting of the 30-week moving average up until early this year and really ever since as soon as gold broke into a new bull market the dollar has mostly traded below the 30-week moving average with a couple of exceptions where it penetrated back above the moving average but notice even the recent price action has consolidated below the moving average. Um, and as well, I mean, we're clearly seeing uh, lower highs 
on each high of the last two years. So this is starting to kind of form a topping pattern. Now it's not inconceivable that the dollar would break out back into a stage two advance. And this could be viewed as simply a consolidation over the last two years, but that's in my view, the less likely scenario given what's going on in other markets. But nevertheless, it's, it's since the dollar is so close to the 30 week moving average, you have to keep in mind that as the market changes, it's appropriate to change with it. So if it does break out back into a stage two, then all the bets are off of all the markets that move inverse to the dollar would then probably start moving lower once again. Um, but looking at a longer term view of the US dollar, what's interesting is that the dollar has tended to go through alternating down and up cycles ever since you know the mid 80s. And these cycles have occurred over a period of about seven or eight years. So for example, when the US dollar topped in 1985, um, around 95 uh, over the next seven year period till about 1992 the dollar was in a down cycle um, where it bottomed around 78 and then once that down cycle ended the dollar rallied for a period of about eight years until early 2001 and then after that another down cycle for the dollar and this is really what traders uh if you've been trading over the last 15 years might remember was the period the you know the first decade of the 2000s where really every inverse dollar investment was really the hot markets like commodities foreign stocks etc everybody was trying to bail out of the dollar and the dollar lost about 50 basis points um from 121 down to 71 and when the dollar bottomed in 2008 um, it once again went into an up cycle where what's interesting is it was kind of a muted cycle up until early 2014 and then we got the big super spike in the dollar um, into March 2015 so the dollar gained back another 30 points over a seven year period again to early 2015 now the question is is this cycle repeating once again and is the dollar now ready to embark on another cycle lower and continue this pattern of alternating up and down cycles looking at a uh, different other currencies the japanese yen after being in a bear market um ever since the dollar has been in a bull from 2011 or so um moved back into a stage two advance early this year and really hasn't um, even retested the 30 week moving average ever since the breakout back in February. So this, this has been the strongest currency against the US dollar this year. The British pound, however, everyone's familiar with the Brexit vote, which essentially, you know, whacked the pound and it's still in a stage four decline. So th this is the weakest currency against the of the developed currencies against the US dollar. And it's still in a stage four decline. The commodity currencies, as shown with the Canadian dollar, is consolidating after moving above the 30 week moving average um, in around April this year and is still trying to hold on to the moving average and not resume the stage four decline that's been going on, you know, ever since the dollar has been strong. So this currency is kind of like trying to complete a stage one base and trying to validate the breakout, but it remains to be seen whether that's going to happen or not. Now the Australian dollar is acting a little bit stronger than the Canadian dollar where it's, still above the 30 week moving average and you know still in a um, very early potential stage to advance if it can just break out again um, above this resistance level that's been in place since about March of this year 
taking a look at the inverse US dollar ETF once again we can see this large stage one base that's been going on for a couple of years and you know notice how really besides the stage four decline uh, in 2014 it's really this market was kind of directionless for a long period of time but now that we've formed this base once again it remains to be seen we're right at the 30 week moving average as we speak and it's you know it's probably coming to a point where this market's going to start moving in one direction or the other at some point now looking at some markets that will be greatly impacted by the coming uh, move in the US dollar is something like commodities where commodities have been in a nasty stage four decline for multiple years now and the GCC commodity ETF um, retook the 30 week moving average uh, earlier this year but still really hasn't um, moved back into a, a real stage to advance it's it's still trying to hold the moving average as we speak and we're still not seeing a lot of volume come into this ETF as well so it's once again you see, see kind of like the inverse head and shoulder kind of bottoming pattern but no confirmed breakout in the CTF and no really confirmed outperformance of the S&P 500 which is another hallmark of a of a new bull market another um, market that's you know affected by currency moves is the oil market and oil in general has been a market that's once again trying to complete a bottom but it still kind of remains to be seen. You got this inverse head and shoulders pattern and the price action is trying to stabilize, but it's yet to be determined whether this is, is not is a fake rally that resumes the bear market or whether what we're seeing here is a real bottom and potential new bull market. Now as far as stock markets are concerned, typically what happens when the US dollar is strong is that US stocks outperform and when the US dollar is weak, foreign markets outperform because money tends to flow towards the markets that are also benefited by currency movements. So for example, if you're a foreign investor investing in a, another stock market and your currency is declining against that market, you'll not only reap the rewards of rising stock prices but the rising currency will make the stock gains um, even further enhanced so what we're seeing here is the emerging markets ETF versus the S&P 500 and you can see that ever since the US dollar really has been in a bull market the emerging market stocks have been in a bear market versus US stocks now what's happened over the past year or so is that we've got a stage one basing pattern here and actually if you look at money flows more money has been flowing into the EEM ETF versus the S&P 500 which is why the volumes actually increased dramatically over the last um, or during this year and notice how the price action is actually holding above the key moving averages which is signifying that we could be seeing a new bull market in emerging market stocks versus US stocks so really the bottom line is that you know even though I don't really like trading currencies and you have to use a lot of leverage to get really decent gains out of currencies but the impact of the direction of the coming move in the US dollar and in the euro is going to determine the fate of a lot of different markets like commodities and determine the performance of foreign stocks versus US stocks.